I see universal basic income as being inevitable. The problems in our uh, social security system comes from decades of uh, legislational changes that we have been doing. The Federal Reserve was created between the 16th and 18th century. Democracy at that time was considered a way to preserve class. And so at the moment of money creation, you have inequality as a function of money. Basic income is one way to remedy some of what was dysfunctional about the original logic. It's uh, very difficult for me to see that uh, money as such would uh, involve aspects of inequality, even if those who created it had that purpose. Financially, the basic income uh, didn't uh, change my life at all, but the psychological effects were good. I felt free. When you feel free, you feel creative, and that can uh, increase productivity in the society. Universal basic income is complementary money that is unconditionally given to everyone for free. The amount is generally determined by giving people enough to meet their basic needs. For me it was kind of winning a lottery because for a freelance you never know when your fees are paid for example. You have to wait sometimes even months so you could be sure that you will get something and you, can, you could always earn so much you wanted. So um, that's the, the main idea of, uh, of uh, basic income I think. And for me it was very successful because I didn't have to fill any forms or take part to the mandatory courses where they teach you how to make your CV or these kind of things. There are certain situations with the taxation and uh, increasements in our, in our, for example, in our basic unemployment benefit that you might end up with, uh, with the situation that uh, when you take a part-time work you may end up with less euros into your hands than when you would be totally unemployed and receiving full unemployment benefit. If everybody uh, will have basic income, it would help those people who feel uh, humiliated or, or lower because they know that it's the same allowance for everybody. It's like the children allowance in Finland already. Even the rich people are getting it. So this could be a adult allowance for everybody. Based in Berlin, Germany, there is a group of basic income activists working on a project called Circles. Circles is a blockchain-based basic income implementation. It is a way to pay people basic income using the technologies of cryptocurrencies, internet and smartphones. When we think about traditional money systems, there's so many things wrong with them. I mean, we have so many problems in the world that are caused by not just the way the money system works, but also because people don't understand how the money system works. When we talk about circles, we're, we're challenging that consensus. We're saying, well, have you thought about a different way to do it? No, money doesn't have to just be money that the state says, this is money, you must accept it. We can also experiment what money we create ourselves and we exchange ourselves. What I think is exciting about circles is that it is a stateless basic income. So there's no waiting for a government to determine whether or not they have enough funds to pay for a basic income. And so what is exciting about cryptocurrency is that you have this open toolkit for money creation and economic exploration and a unique group of really excited creators that are trying to engage with this uh, like new economic space. So I would have been part of the basic income activism movement before I started this. And in, at that time, I was uh, part of Basic Income Ireland. And although I think they're making progress, I got frustrated by that because I didn't see enough happening. If you're going to take so long, if you're going to be so incremental in the change that we want to see, then we're going to go and make a system and, and challenge the state to say, we can do this better. And I mean, you know, I don't want to be in opposition to the state, but I want to make it so that 
um, they're kind of forced to think about these issues in a more realistic way instead of being able to say well we'll do another study or we need to do another 10 year you know plan and we this isn't going to happen yet well, I have been saying that I don't believe that the basic income is coming to Finland in a few next years, but maybe in 50 years, maybe. I think that we have to renew our social security systems step by step, because it's kind of like a puzzle. When you, for example, give 10 euros more to this guaranteed pension, uh, it's going to affect the pensioners, housing allowance and some other benefits here and there. So you need to figure out it very carefully. You cannot just take one benefit and do changes in that because it's a kind of like on the whole the puzzle. I think that uh, to get these cryptocurrency networks to function, uh, one has to experiment. There's no theoretical answer to that. But what one should take into account is that people have to exchange real things. And these people who are involved in the cryptocurrency network, they are the ones who have to give things. If you are there and I want something from you, then you don't get to play with your child. You have to go somewhere and do some work. And the question is, are you willing to do it? You know, Circles is part of a whole, you know, uh, topology of different projects trying to educate people in different ways about the potentials of blockchain and what it can do. Finland ran a two-year experiment on basic income from 2017 to 2018. They chose 2,000 people randomly from the people who were unemployed in November of 2016. Those people received 560 euros per month between the years 2017 and 18. No strings attached. And now in Finland's experimentation, the government's main goal is to see if this kind of mechanism of free unconditional money increases the incentive for people to take on work. The basic income forces you to work because uh, as such as, for example, 560 euros is not enough. But you can keep it and you can uh, have part-time jobs, for example, because the whole concept of work is changing. That could be one answer to a big social question. Something has to be done. Finland's uh, universal basic income experiment was very narrow. Not too many people were involved. And uh, if I understand correctly what the preliminary results were, they were basically zero. Nothing happened to these people. They felt a little bit better off because they didn't have to fulfill some forms. I think that the most valuable aspect of that experiment is that uh, it makes politicians and the society in general more willing to do experiments about social issues. That's not only the 2,000 people in this experiment because we have also a control group that are on the same profile that these target group people are. So the control group is all the other people on the same profile, so altogether 175,000 people receiving unemployment benefit, uh, basic unemployment benefit and not basic income. So we all the time during these two years have been collecting data from these two groups and we are now com comparing them. Uh, this experience uh, doesn't give the, uh, the answers of uh, the real basic income, but it gives you a hint, it gives you something. Uh, giving people free money, 
I tend to think that it's all about the level. If the level of these payments is too high, it clearly creates disincentives, say, to work or to do some other productive activity. Some of the people in this experimentation have been seeking for work and actually one, one person was in this experimentation that said that now he can start doing what he wants to do. Is it good that uh, we give people the opportunity to do something they want to do and not kind of like uh, paying taxes and going to work that our employment offices offer you? I know that the government understands that if you feel free, if you know that you will receive something from the government, it uh, makes you creative and productive. And that's the idea. So if the government helps without conditions its citizens, the citizens will help the government. I believe people make better choices themselves than the state saying you have to do this job or you have to do this to get your social welfare. With Circles all you need to do is download the app and then you start getting paid Circles. So anybody can sign up, it's absolutely unconditional um, and they start receiving Circles. Now you might say well how do Circles have a value after that and so essentially a user can't spend their circles anywhere unless people trust them. And so what users will do is they'll receive their circles and then start making trust relationship in their neighborhoods and in their city between people that they trade with. When they trust you, they're accepting to value your currency. And so if we get enough people that value each other's currency, we start to do this kind of magical levitation trick, which is that we have a currency that's worth nothing, that starts to be worth something. This is a social solution, it's a movement. It needs people to be involved and care about it. At its most basic, Circles is a personal currency with a one-to-one -one trust relationship that's hyper-local because of that really close relationship. The reason that we have one-to-one -one trust relationships is because in, in the crypto ecosystem and just generally online, uh, if you fake having a second identity, it's called a Sybil attack. So how trust functions is actually still a problem in the space. Trust can be upheld in small circles and in larger circles it's much more difficult. If one wants to have a, a well-functioning universal basic income system based on these circles, then it has to be large. One of the problems with the blockchain solutions is they seem newfangled and confusing. And a lot of people are, you know, if they have a choice of using a traditional system that seems to provide the same thing, even though it doesn't do it as well, they will go for that because they can understand it. The ideology, I should say, of circles is the ideology of trying to treat money as something that is part of our social space. It's a social invention that we all agree to together. And so why can't we just create a different system and, and agree to that together, you know? Money has always been an experiment. Maybe it wasn't thought of that way, but now that we have like a failed system where we can see some of the failings um, of the current system, and there's this open door to be like, oh, well then how would we do it differently? And so to, to at least start everyone off supported, I think is a humanist concept. How money is created and who creates money is a question worth creatively investigating. I think people should seriously think about the monetary system, how money is created. And the monetary system is really complicated and it can, be, it can fail in many ways. And some of the failures are caused by politicians and people should understand these mechanisms because when the system fails, the monetary system, it causes huge losses to individual lives and huge uh, losses for national welfare.
you know, we as the creators of Circles, we need to back this currency. We need to have confidence in it. Allied to the project of creating Circles, we always had as, alongside it the project of setting up a cafe. Um, because he thought that's a good way everybody drinks coffee, you know, and that's a good way to, to kind of create some uh, value in the in the economy and also have a place whereby people who are interested in circles or just interested in basic income could come along and chat with other people. So we built this tiny house cafe and we had it open in the Bauhaus Museum last year and it was a really cool experience you know because it had all these different people from around the world and just going through the process of showing them an app and showing them the process whereby they can spend circles to buy coffee. We had a prototype, uh, it was very basic, I built it myself and they could sign up, basically sign up name, a picture and that's all and an email. Essentially then they would be given a certain amount of circles to play with. It's a great way to kind of get people to think about the possibilities of doing something like circles and also you know sell good coffee and have a place we can hang out whilst there are an infinite amount of potential circles there's only a finite amount of trust relationships that could happen and therefore a finite amount of trade that can happen because you need to have a personal trust relationship with people it tends to prioritize local exchanges over international exchanges i think that if people start to question the way money is created and how circles will have been a success it's a hoarding resistant currency, so the goal isn't to accrue as much of it as you can um, and hold on to it, because holding on to it does not make a gain in value. We have a dichotomy in society between value and values. And you think about those two words. Value says how much is something worth, whereas values are all those intangible things that don't have a worth, that are valuable. We've given it the name. And like, we have a society in which value destroys values. You know, that the more value you can attain in the world through monetary means, the less you have to care about values because you can pay your way through these moral situations. You don't have to, you know, uh, rely on people around you. So because of the trust system, when you think about the value that somebody's coins have or what they can spend that money on, it's really dependent on their actions in that network. You know, Have they made a trust network? Have they set up reciprocal trust relationships with people where they trade back and forth? If they have, those are strong trust relationships. That means they can spend their currency in more places and it has a value that's higher than somebody else's coins where they make no efforts. What it does is actually to be determined. There's no really telling if it will be successful and it's so much gonna be determined by the network that it's in. We hope that once we can prove it works in Berlin, which is a big, big ask, but if we can do that, then we can split up and we can go around the world and try and build these uh, circles communities in places that really, really are crying out for a currency solution, a different monetary system. We need to have a system which is uh, easier, without humiliation of the unemployed people, uh, without uh, any uh, sanctions, activity sanctions or these kind of things. The discussion here in Finland has been now drawn into right things. So this massive bureaucracy, as I told you, and the complexity of our social security system and the, the incentive traps in our current system, we need to do something about it. And the work has already started because we have a work going on now in order to figure out how to renew our social security system. So I think it's already a success that it started. I'm in favor to basic income. It will uh, simplify the social security system. It will give time for the social workers to work with the people who really need help. Now they have to go uh, all those files and applications uh, with my kind of people. I don't need help, real help. I mean ex-cons, uh, people uh, addicted. They need help. 
So now it's the time for the social workers to do their job they, uh, they are educated to do.